Welcome to ADT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations. Week 3, Digital Game-Based Learning. This is video clip 1 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapralos, and over the next few minutes, we're going to discuss virtual reality and virtual worlds. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number 1, what is virtual reality? Number 2, what is a virtual environment? Number three, what is augmented reality? And finally, number four, what is second life? Any discussion of virtual reality and virtual worlds will undoubtedly contain plenty of terminology, some of which can be confusing at times. In this video clip, we will examine some of this terminology and in the process of doing so, create a better understanding of what virtual reality and virtual worlds actually are. Let's begin with virtual world. A virtual world is a simulated 3D environment where participants from different and remote locations can meet with each other at the same time. The virtual world can capture and convey enough social cues, such as body language, interactive props, the look and feel of the real surroundings, to convince some part of the participants' brains that they are physically in the world being simulated. The virtual world itself is essentially the content of a given medium may exist solely in the mind of its creator or be broadcast in such a way that it's available to others. In other words, it can exist without being displayed within a virtual reality system. And we'll talk about virtual reality next. By virtual reality, I mean an integrated collection of hardware, software, and content assembled for producing a particular VR experience. Just as an example to further illustrate this, consider a film script which exists independently of specific instances of the performance described by the film script. You can refer to the script of a play as a description of the play, and when it is brought to life via actors, stage sets, etc., we experience the play's virtual world. Next, we'll look at virtual reality. Virtual reality, as I pointed out just previously, is an integrated collection of hardware, software, and content assembled for producing a VR experience. It's essentially a medium composed of interactive computer simulations that sense the participant's position and actions and replace or augment the feedback to one or more senses, providing the feeling of being mentally immersed or present in the simulated or virtual world. There's four key elements of a virtual reality experience. These include the virtual world, immersion, sensory feedback, and interactivity. Let's take a closer look at these four key elements of a virtual reality experience. We've already discussed virtual worlds, so let's begin with immersion. A simplistic definition of immersion is immersion into an alternate reality or point of view. But what exactly does that mean? Or in other words, what is an alternate reality or an alternate point of view? When we look at an alternate world, it's a representation of an actual space that exists elsewhere, or it could be purely imaginary. And it's often created in the mind of individuals, perhaps creative individuals. And imagination is vital to VR. Imagination is where the virtual world begins and how many virtual worlds are experienced. So if you can imagine it, it is possible, even if the space you imagine cannot exist in the same way as it does in our universe. So imagination allows us to dwell where we choose, when we choose, and with whom we choose and it's limited only by what we can imagine and our ability to communicate it. An important aspect of immersion is the suspension of disbelief. When we can suspend our belief that the world is not real, we are most likely immersed. And of course, immersion itself is not specific to virtual reality. We can be immersed in a very good novel, a comic book, movie, theater, amongst others. Next, we'll look at sensory feedback. Unlike the more traditional media, with virtual reality, users can position themselves to affect events in the, in the virtual world. And this really makes the reality far more compelling. Direct sensory feedback is provided to the user based on their position in the virtual world. And of course, this implies some means of tracking the user's position within the virtual world. And typically, or traditionally, the user's head is tracked. Position tracking presents a whole new world of challenges, which we're not going to get into here. Next, we'll look at interactivity. To seem authentic and increase immersion, virtual reality must respond to users' actions. And this is termed interactive. It must be interactive. 
Essentially, this involves updating the virtual world depending on the actions of the user. So if the user moves an object in the virtual world, the, the, the virtual world should update accordingly. Finally, when we're dealing with such collaborative environments, the notion of avatar becomes important. And by avatar, I mean a virtual object that is used to represent a user or a physical object within a, a virtual world. It's typically visual. And it's object embodied by a participant. In many cases, you're able to customize your avatar. It's the, the representation of yourself within the virtual world. Next, we'll look at virtual environment. So a virtual environment is often used as a synonym for both virtual reality and virtual world. The term virtual environment actually predates the term virtual reality. And the term itself is actually ambiguous. It's defined as a virtual world or as a world presented in a particular virtual reality hardware configura uh, configuration. And a definition of virtual environment is as follows. It's a virtual world or it's an instance of a virtual world presented in an interactive medium such as virtual reality. And in fact, that's the definition I like to use. It's essentially an instance or an implementation of a virtual world. Next, we'll look at augmented reality. In augmented reality, virtual reality representations are combined or augmented with real world information. So it's essentially the merging of the virtual world and the real world. Virtual reality representations provide the user with additional information that are not available by the unaided human senses. Now, of course, this implies that we have a special display in order to overlay that additional information, to overlay and view that additional information. So augmented reality itself has many applications, and many of these applications focus on the concept of repairing the internal components of a living or a mechanical system. And it's widely used for health education and training. And just as an example, you can provide information about where cancerous tissue is located within a patient, or you can provide information to a surgeon on where to make an incision by overlaying the incision, for example, on the patient's body. Let's examine a specific virtual world. You've probably heard of Second Life and perhaps you've used Second Life. Second Life itself is an internet-based, multi-user, 3D world construction set that emphasizes creativity, collaboration, socializing, and self-government. With Second Life, users are able to communicate through their graphical avatars, which are, as we talked about earlier, virtual personifications, using gestures, text messages, and their voice. And the fact that avatars can be personalized is really a key aspect of Second Life, and by many this is considered to be very fun and compelling. Second Life itself is comprised of virtual land that can be purchased directly from Linden Labs or other third-party users. The virtual land itself is divided into regions that have specific names and represent 65,536 square meters of area, and these are often known as SIMs. Mainland regions typically consist of many landowners residing side by side, and islands are owned by individuals, a corporation, or an institution, and typically their development is dictated by a particular theme. Many educational institutions have a large presence in Second Life, where they typically own islands and set up virtual representations of their campus within Second Life. This allows students and general public to partake in virtual lectures, virtual laboratories, or just navigate their campus and learn about the campus itself. Several years ago, there was a big buzz with placing lectures in a Second Life environment. And many times this involved the particular educational institution setting up a lecture hall in Second Life. Students would navigate into the virtual lecture hall and simply watch a PowerPoint presentation. Do you think this is effective? Is it an effective use of the technology? Are there any advantages to doing so? Are there any disadvantages to doing so? It's certainly beyond the scope of this course to examine Second Life extensively. However, there are a number of resources available to you online, including the following uh, two YouTube videos. The first, Introduction to Second Life, provides a general overview of Second Life. And although it is somewhat dated, going back to 2006, it is still relevant and definitely worth looking at. The second video, 
provides an overview of the educational uses of Second Life. And again, here it discusses uh, the use of Second Life in educational settings. And this brings us to the end of video clip one and to our list of synthesis questions. Number one, is Second Life a game? Is it a simulation? Is it an educational simulation? Explain. Number two, the divide between gaming and virtual reality is eroding. Explain. And finally, number three, does immersion involve physical and mental aspects? Or does immersion, in other words, simply imply mental immersion? Is it all in our mind? This concludes this video clip. Thank you.